Hello and welcome to Healed and Restored. I'm your host, Elsa Spady. Thank you for being here with me today. Since I started doing this show, my desire is that Healed and Restored would always be a place where men and women can come and find a community of people who care for one another. A place not only to share stories of our brokenness, but mostly to share all the wonderful things God is doing in each of our lives. I also wanted to highlight people and organizations who are doing amazing things in our Charlotte and Lake Norman communities. When my family and I moved to the Charlotte area a little over eight years ago, I heard about the wonderful work being done at Miravia. My husband and I attended our first banquet with some friends from church in 2013. Miravia is a pregnancy residential center located on the grounds of Belmont Abbey in Belmont, North Carolina. I see Miravia as the ultimate way to confirm our identity as pro-life people. Miravia is a safe haven for pregnant college students. They provide a beautiful alternative student housing and support for women who are single, pregnant, and desiring to attend college at the same time. I think it's a brilliant idea, and I also think that would be wonderful if all of our Catholic colleges and universities would have their own Miravia. Just think about all the babies we could help save. My guest today, Debbie Capen, is the executive director for Miravia. I had the pleasure of meeting Debbie a few years ago through another ministry I'm a part of. About six years ago, a few of my friends and I started what we call the Mother-Daughter Spiritual Brunch. Every May, we put together this beautiful event where mothers, daughters, grandmothers, and friends get together for a few hours of fellowship in a beautiful venue to enjoy delicious food together and to listen to an inspirational talk on a different top topic that impacts Catholic women in today's society. From the very beginning, we had decided that each year we would choose a different cause or organization in our community to give back any extra money we may have raised for the event. A few years ago, it was decided that Miravia would be the recipient, and we invited Debbie to come join us at the brunch and receive the money we raised for Miravia. I am very excited to talk to Debbie today about the great things being done at Miravia. So, Debbie, welcome to Healed and Restored, and it's so, so nice to have you with me today. Oh, Elsa, I'm so honored to be on your show. You always do such a, a thoughtful and, and meaningful show, and you're, you've been such a, a beautiful advocate for the mission of Miravia as well, and it's it's really just been a joy to get to know you over these years. Oh, thank you. It, it, same here. You have been a joy to get to know also. And uh, we, I just saw each other the other day at um, uh, St. Mark on Sunday, um, St. Mark September Fest, so that was nice. I didn't know you were going to be there with the table. That was wonderful. Yeah, it was so nice to see so many friends of Miravia in person and just be able to, to reconnect after we're all kind of coming coming out of uh, isolation, and uh, yeah, it was, I had had a marvelous time. Good, very good. Yes, it was a wonderful night that night. We had beautiful weather. Everybody was out having a great time. It was beautiful to see that. 
So, Debbie, before we go into today's topic, I'd like to ask you the same question I now ask all of my guests. What was the best advice or wisdom you have received for some, from someone in your life? And it could be a man or a woman, but someone that gave you one of the best advice so far. Well, I, I love that question, and when I give it some thought, I, I hope this doesn't sound too cliche, and it wasn't someone I know personally, but it was from Father Benedict Groeschel okay. uh, when I was watching his program on EWTN many years ago, and he gave the simplest, but I thought just the most meaningful advice, and that was, wherever you are, whatever you're facing, just take the next good step. Mm. And I, I, I thought that's it sounds so so simple and and knowing what good means, right? Being prayerful and trying to do the right thing and and over the years I've been able to apply that in every part of my life. I mean, it could be from you know a decision about a meal to you know a, a strategic plan. Um, and other priests I've heard say it, and then our own uh, Father Matthew Cowles here in the Charlotte area, added on to that one time, which, which really edified you know, my faith, mm-hmm. when he said, if you take that next good step with goodwill and prayerfully, you know, seeking to do God's will, our good Father will reorient the entire universe around us to make sure that that step is in the right direction. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, so I found that so encouraging, it and I, I try to pass that little nugget along whenever I can. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. And that's what it's about. That's why I wanted to start with that question, because I think that um, as we reflect on on the wisdom of other people and the stuff that we've learned, and we pass those along, we're all helping each other to grow, right? Absolutely. I'm, it's it's such a simple thing to think about, but that what he said is true. I mean, instead of letting ourselves get all, all worked up and frazzled and get all stressed out, if we just take a breath and do the next thing, next right thing, and offer it up or give it to God, I mean, how many um, situ- bad situations we probably would avoid, right? Exactly. I know. It, it does. It, kind of, it brings us back to the present moment where yes. God is, too, when we yes. stop and do that. Definitely. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was wonderful. So moving on to, and today I really wanted to dive into Miravia. I've been impressed. Um, we moved here from Bismarck, North Dakota, and we were also helping a different organization up there that does very much uh, what Miravia is doing, but they don't have, um, I don't think they have a home the way you do. They have something that's temporary for the women, and they do help them after the baby is born financially and all of that. But it's along the same lines, right? So when I moved here and I heard about Miravia, it was just a no-brainer. You know, my husband and I, yeah, let's go. Let's go support them. So I was super impressed. I remember that first banquet we attended, just thinking, oh, my goodness, this is such a wonderful idea. I wish that we had more Miravias. I wish that every big city had one, you know. And and ever since, I pray for that. I pray that we are able to get to a point where Christian people everywhere are doing what you're doing at Miravia. You know what I mean? So uh, praise God for the work you guys are doing. And, and now I would like to hear from your own. I could go on and on about Miravia, but I think it's important for you to, to explain to our listeners in your own words about Miravia. Please. Well, thank you for the, for the kind words. You know, Miravia is a Catholic organization, um, and it started back in 1994 and over and over again, my, my experience is very similar to yours, Elsa, and I think a lot of people share a, a similar sentiment that when we find out, found out about it, we're all drawn to it and get excited about it. Yes. Um, my own personal journey uh, here kind of it, 
it's so in step with the organization in that back in 2001, my, my husband and I are reverts to the faith. Okay. And um, we were at St. Matthew one night after Wednesday night mass, and some new friends invited us to this event. And we thought, well, th- this is a great way to meet, you know, meet new Catholic friends. And sure, we, you know, we'll go support the, you know, the organization. Mm-hmm. And you walk through those doors the night of the banquet, and you see a thousand other pro-life, happy, positive, you know, active people. Yes. And it's just electric. And it the is. Holy Spirit moves through that event in ways that, you know, I hear over and over again different experiences that people have there and are touched. And so we started going, and then um, m- nobody, you know, none of my friends knew that I was carrying around this terrible secret mm. that I had had an abortion I'm in so college. I'm so sorry, Debbie. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, talk about being healed, um, mm-hmm. you know, through God's divine mercy and the, the love of that He has, that Christ has for us. Yes. It was part of my journey back to the faith. Isn't that and beautiful? And I was so excited to see this ministry doing exactly what needs to be done, to mm-hmm. meet women where they are. Yes. And so in 2004, we were just um, attendees, and they announced this new college facility. Okay. And I literally wanted to jump out of my chair. Wow. And I thought, somebody finally gets it. Like, they understand the need. Yes. And all of a sudden, you you were there in college, <laughs> and you were like, I wish there was a Miravia that could have helped me. Okay, we need to take a quick break. I'm so sorry, but we're going to come right back, okay? Absolutely. Carolina Catholic Radio is your local EWTN parish and community connection, bringing you local news and information from over 100 parishes in the Charlotte Diocese and Rock Hill Oratory. Catch the spirit. Preferably consider a tax-deductible donation today at carolinacatholicradio.org. Hello, this is Carolyn Klicka, Relationship Coach with Abounding Joy, a new feature on Carolina Catholic Radio. Our marriage and other relationships are so important to our peace and happiness. Are you struggling with conflicts that just continue to escalate? Are you dealing with anger, fear, or just feel like you need to find new solutions? I'll share some godly principles on how you can resolve relationship and inner conflicts, create agreements, and move into the peace and joy that God wants for you. Discover greater freedom and He through insights about the truth of who we are and what God is asking of us. Join me daily for two minutes of insight and encouragement for your heart and your relationships. This is Carolyn Clicka with Abounding Joy. Visit me at AboundingJoyMinistry.com. Listen in and discover why today I choose joy. If you had the chance to sit down for 10 minutes with the world's greatest teacher, Would you take it? One Minute Monk, Abbot Placid Solari of Belmont Abbey. If you said yes, you're in luck. Go take out your Bible, and you can spend 10 minutes or even more with the Spirit of the Living God. Who is a better teacher or greater expert than the Holy Spirit? In his rule, St. Benedict sends us to the Bible every day, and it's free. 2 Timothy tells us all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness. If we truly believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, what holds us back from turning to it each day? For your free copy of The Rule of St. Benedict, visit OneMinuteMonk.com, O-N-E, MinuteMonk.com. If we truly believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, what holds us back from turning to it each day? The Carolina Catholic Radio Network, a proud affiliate of EWTN Radio, has now been on the air, on the internet, and on your smartphone for two and a half years, with many wonderful local programs to educate, inform, and inspire you on your journey of faith. With the negative impact of secular media in our culture, the positive impact of our Carolina Catholic Apostolate is needed now more than ever to evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith to guide us in daily life. Carolina Catholic has many awesome plans for you across our six platforms this fall. In the weeks ahead, we will begin to share our plans as we secure your financial support to make them a reality. 
please consider a one-time donation or monthly tithe today. Just go to the Donate tab on carolinacatholicradio.org. Thank you for your prayerful consideration to join us in our mission to evangelize across the Carolinas. May God bless you abundantly. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, and today I have the pleasure of having with me on the phone Debbie Capen from Miravia. And I I have a soft spot for Miravia too. I do because I do believe that if we're going to say that we are pro life, we have to act upon it. We have to reach out to the women. And we have to help them, not only when they're while they're pregnant, but we can we need to start helping them and supporting them after the baby comes. Also, you know, and Miravia does that just that. So let's get back where we were when we took break, Debbie, and, and just continue on telling us how how Miravia came to be. At the, that's something that I wanted to know. I don't think I ever heard the story behind that. I know it used to be called Room in the Inn, and I wanted to know why the change of name, just because, and and then find out how it became to be on the grounds of Belmont Abbey, please. Okay, sure. Happy to. Um, after the organization started in 94, um, it, we, Room at the Inn at the time, as it was called, had a home in Charlotte for pregnant women. Okay. And um, that could house up to six women there. And then along the way, regulations changed as far as you know, facility requirements and those kinds of things. And the board of directors realized that there, were, there, was, there needed to be significant um, changes made to that facility in order to keep it up to the new regulations. Okay. So they took that opportunity to say, okay, if we're going to do this, is this what we want to do? Is this what's needed in our community? And they did uh, some some long-range planning and looked at the uh, area and realized that there were other organizations in our area that were maternity homes. Mm-hmm. Um, but nationwide, the most underserved demographic for college, for pregnant women experiencing unplanned pregnancies was college students. Wow. And it, it was only God could have done this. So at the same time, Abbott Placid Solari, the Abbott of Belmont Abbey, mm-hmm. um, was at an event uh, for Miravia, and in speaking with a board member, said, well, you serve college-age women, don't you? And they said, yes, that's typically our demographic. And he said, you know, if you ever consider serving college students, you know, the Benedictine model is to bring in the community to our space um, to serve them. He said, we would be willing to donate the land wow. for the facility. That and is that's such how a God moved, right? Wow. Um, <laughs> So, so obviously, you know, this was meant to be, yes. um, and you started the capital campaign for the facility there, um, transitioned the, uh, the original home to what is now our outreach center, mm-hmm. where we serve hundreds and hundreds of women and children each year at that facility with, you know, material needs and life skills classes. Um, and so at the time that we were leading up to you know, building the new facility, opening the new facility, um, it seemed like the right time to rebrand. Okay. Um, yeah, so Room at the End had started in 94, but in that time at since, there were other organizations with similar names, okay. one in Charlotte, another one in Greensboro. Mm-hmm. And so it caused a lot of confusion. And, oh, I you bet. Know, especially, you know, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, and again, only God could have done this. So God sent into the lives of the board again um, a man who that's what he does for a living, uh, Clayton Tolley of Brand Symbol. And he heard about Miravia and the, the need, and he and his company donated their services to help us find a new name. Oh, wow. Uh, 
So it, it was really only God could put all of this together. And so the name Miravia is meant to convey the miraculous way. Mm. Um, we feel like we are helping to lead these mothers and children on a miraculous way of life. Wow, I Not love all- that. <laughs> I love that. I love the way you just said that because it is. I mean, the women, obviously, this has been going on for decades, right? Mm -hmm. We have been lied to. And one of the biggest lie I feel women are buying into today, society, is that abortion is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, when I have two teenage girls and think, goodness they understand we talk about this over the kitchen table and they see the lies and and actually my 17 year old is very outspoken about being pro-life and when they tell me about some of the stuff that's out there on social media and how women in their 20s are actually glorifying their abortion it's just sick it's just it's very sad to see where we are you know, that women have been so brainwashed and so lied to that, that they bought into that. You know, that a child growing in their womb is trash. Get get that thing out of there, whatever means necessary, so you can move on and have a good life. Because otherwise you won't. You know, and just the idea of of teaching women that kids are going to get in you in the way of your happiness. It's just so screwed up, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, we're mothers and we understand how, how beautiful it is to be a mom. Yes, it comes with a lot of challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not a walk in the park, but it's part of our way of getting into heaven, I think. Right. You right. know, and helping yeah. them get into heaven. You know, so looking at this society, and I'm sure you have even more stories of how you've encountered people that didn't understand, and maybe they came your way, and they came to the banquet, and they completely changed their minds about it, you know? And and I would like to hear stories like that. Do you have stories to share about someone? Oh, yeah, I'd love to share a couple. Um, So at Belmont Abbey, the college has invited us and embraced us there and brought in women So far, we've had women from 10 different colleges in eight different states, as far away as Texas, come as a destination to to continue their pregnancy and their education. And the school is this beautiful example of evangelizing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's once you see it, you get it. And we had a wonderful young woman call and ask for a meeting with our program manager and she felt compelled to come and say, look, when I came to Belmont Abbey, you know, I, I'm Catholic, raised Catholic, but I was pro-choice. She's like, mm. I didn't embrace the pro-life message. Mm-hmm. And I considered it that it was a woman's choice. She said, then I came here, and I saw your student mothers. Mm. And she said, and I realized that it was a lie, mm. that, this, that, it, that you don't have to choose. Um, and for her to feel that compelled to come and tell us that, the, her own personal conversion, I, I have so much hope that how many others are feeling the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, one of our student mothers shared she was a student athlete, and when she found out that she was pregnant, she had people counsel her to have an abortion, which mm. being very convicted in her pro-life faith, she you know, did not take that advice. Thank goodness. And then she had those fellow student athletes later when her son was now coming with her to the games and mm-hmm. they had all kind of adopted him as their, as their, you know, little brother. And they said, we all, you know, thought that you couldn't do it, and that abortion was the answer. <sighs> and by her doing it, you know, these brave young women that are mm-hmm. that are willing to put themselves out there and be the example. Be the example. You're right. Yep. They are changing hearts and minds. I, I totally agree. That's a beautiful story. That's a, a wonderful example, because you're right. I think that those young people are being brainwashed to believe that it's impossible to do it. Right. it there's no way you can do it. So don't even think about it. You know, you, you, your only solution is to get an abortion, you know, and, and that is the biggest lie. Right. 
you know, because once you keep telling people the same thing over and over again, they begin to believe it, you know, and I think the young women today are very much in that dark um, spot of just believing in the lie, you know, and, and there's so much work we need to do as a community, as Christians, as Catholics, to to help. Uh, like I tell my girls, uh, it's, you might have to tell someone there's other options. You don't need to get an abortion. You're going to be just fine. You know, and we, we talk about examples of young women that we see in our own community that, that made that choice and see how blessed they were after they, they decided to have that child. You know what I mean? And, and it's, so it's possible and it's beautiful. Okay, we're going to take one more quick break and we'll be right back, Debbie. Okay. Thank you. The Carolina Catholic Parish Portal is now open. You'll find a section for your parish with contact info and easy access to your parish website, YouTube, and Facebook page. Check out your parish portal today at carolinacatholicradio.org or the Carolina Catholic mobile app. This is Tammy Harris. I am the founder and executive director of the Ursus Institute. We fight human trafficking both locally and abroad. I'm also a parishioner at St. Gabriel Catholic Church in Charlotte, as well as the Respect Life Coordinator there. I urge you to check out my website, www.ursusinstitute.net, or to reach out to me personally at my email, tammy at ursusinstitute.net. Ursus is Latin for bear and is spelled U R. S-U-S. And my first name, Tammy, is T-A-M-M-Y. We're involved in many operations right now, such as opening a transitional home for survivors in Western North Carolina. We're involved in a documentary about our work and about the realities of human trafficking, both locally and abroad. We're also giving input into anti-human trafficking legislation, involved in intel operations and rescue operations. There's many other things I'd like to share with you, and there's many ways that you can get involved. So I urge you, please text me at 704-519-7901, email me at tammy at ursusinstitute.net, or check out our website, www.ursusinstitute.net. And again, Ursus is spelled U-R-S-U-S. And please be assured that this human trafficking nonprofit works against trafficking in a way that is aligned with Catholic social teaching. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Kathleen. Please join us every Wednesday at 5 for a brand new episode of our show, Joyful Echo. We absolutely love sharing this time with you. It goes so fast. Oh my goodness, yes. (laughs) We are so committed to praying to the Holy Spirit and seeing what He wants to do in all of our lives. That's right. Sometimes we're sharing scripture. Sometimes it's something about the saints. When time permits, we will share lovely recipes. Yes, Kathleen will, because I'm not the best at that (laughs) lately, but we want you to join us. And if you're new out there and you've not tuned in at five o'clock on Wednesday, please come and join us. Yes. And until then, we are praying for you. See you later, ladies. The Carolina Catholic Radio Network, a proud affiliate of EWTN Radio, is here to encourage and engage us to learn, love, and live our faith in these extraordinary times. We do this with six media platforms. Our audio can be heard on broadcast radio and internet streaming on our website, mobile app, Alexa, and TuneIn with FM quality sound heard anywhere in the world. Carolina Catholic has many awesome plans for you across our six platforms this fall. In the weeks ahead, we will begin to share our plans as we secure your financial support to make them a reality. Please consider a one-time donation or monthly tithe today. Just go to the Donate tab button on carolinacatholicradio.org. Carolina Catholic is needed now more than ever to evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith to guide us in daily life. Thank you for your prayerful consideration to join us and our mission across the Carolinas. May God bless you abundantly. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm your host, Elsa Spady, and today I have with me on the phone Debbie Capian, and she is the executive director for Miravia. 
this beautiful pregnancy residential center located on the grounds of Belmont Abbey. What a blessing it is. You know, Debbie, um, I, you probably have the numbers, but I'm go- I, I know I'm going to be blown away, and I can't wait to listen to this. In the 27 years since Maravia has been around, how many women and children do you think you guys have helped? Um, it's actually very exciting. This year, we hit an amazing number of over 10,000 women and children between Praise the Outreach Jesus. Center and the residential program. That's how many lives oh, have been touched by the work of Miravia. Um, Say that number again, please. 10,000. Oh, my goodness. God is good. Mm-hmm. All the time. All you the know, time. I knew your numbers were high. I mean, I've been to the banquets and I heard <laughs> the numbers, but I didn't remember them. But that is beautiful. That's That blows my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to tell a quick story, and um, and and I believe you know my coworker um, Stephanie Paniza. Yes, I do. She was um, she was sitting at her desk one day, and there was a knock at the door. Which her office is at our old at our facility in Charlotte. It was the previous maternity home. Okay. And she opens the door, and here's a woman standing there with a grown man. You know, um, and she said. Is Sydney Brown here? <laughs> Who was the director uh, when uh, you, uh, when she was there? This woman had been a resident um, at the home uh, nearly you know twenty years prior. Wow! And she said, "I wanted my son to see." Oh my goodness! The place that I was able to come so that he could be here. Oh, I have chills. Mm-hmm. You know, and so every once in a while, God lifts the veil and gives us a glimpse That's so of the fruit of that yes. is that is born from from this work. And oh. it's so you know, God is God is so good and generous. <laughs> I love that story. Mm-hmm. I mean that 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 warms my heart. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I I imagine that young men being so thankful that there were mm-hmm. people there to support his mom. So she could say yes to life. Mm -hmm. I think the support right now is so much more important than anything else. Because because they've been fed the lie, and the lie seems to be the easy way out, right? Get rid of the problem, right? Get rid of the baby, get rid of the problem. But it's we, you and I know it's not what they really want. I, I really believe that deep down... Not even one of those women really want to get rid of that baby. Right. We've been sold all these euphemisms for abortion. And, you know, speaking from my own experience, you know, I was 18. I thought I was grown, you know, mm-hmm. but I, you know, looking back now that I'm a mom, like, oh, my goodness, I was a baby. You were um, a baby. You're but right. We have all these euphemisms of choice and um, reproductive rights and... You know, all I knew was I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I, I didn't expect or, or plan, you know, any of this. And when I went to the college center for the pregnancy test, I was offered no options. Mm. And and I'm going to, I'll definitely be dating myself here, but, you know, their, their advice was that I could look up abortion in the yellow pages. Mm. And this lie that, you know, but here again is how good God is. So yes. that that college that I went to has since invited Miravia back on multiple occasions That's wonderful. to come and speak to the workers at their health center, to have a table at their student fairs, because people want to do the right thing. Yes, I but, agree. You know, they just don't, when people feel like there is no choice, that's why I can't stand that word choice. I know. You're exactly right. Women choose abortion because they feel like they don't have a choice. It's the pressure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when people are telling them, yeah, this is it, you have to do this, you just have to, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're in that situation and your mind is going and, you you know, you can't think straight. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, you're under a, a huge amount of pressure. That's why 
places like Miravia is so important because they have to be right in the open. That th- right. Those young women have to know that they are there. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so they know that actually, yeah, there's a different choice and the right choice. Right. And it's right here. And, and the, with no stigma attached, right? Exactly. You know, that this is what, what really brings me so much joy is that when the young women come to Maravilla, they're, at first they're, you know, super scared, super sure. scared. And then they walk in, and our moms love to meet prospective residents. I because bet. they want so much to share the goodness that they are experiencing uh-huh. with others. And as soon as they see this community of other young women just like themselves, that fear melts away, and then they're able to feel joy, mm. and they come back years after, you know, and, and, and come back and, and bring the kids for us to see later. There was no shame attached to this. That's beautiful. You know, it, yes, it wasn't, you know, but they, like I said before, they're taking the next good step. Mm-hmm. They're taking the next good step mm-hmm. and making the, the, the next good choice, right? right. And, and it sounds like it's just a, Miravia is a beautiful community, Mm-hmm. It's a community of based on love, right? I mean, because love conquers all. We know that. So mm-hmm. love conquers the fear that the the young women are going through, fear of um, rejection, fear of being labeled, fear of not being able to do it, right? Uh, fear of not being good enough, fear that I've disappointed everybody, my family, uh, myself, right? So I can only imagine all those fears coming up to the surface, but then they come into Miravia, and it is this beautiful, loving, accepting environment. Other women that have walked their walk are there to say, hey, come on in. We love you. And we love that child growing in your womb, and we're going to help you. I mean, I can't think of anything better. I, I can't. It is. It's beautiful. Yeah, we can talk about it in, in abstract terms, but there is something when you see it. You know, it's, it's a game changer. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. What you guys are doing um, is just wonderful. It's um, transformative. It's the, I think, the perfect way to act on being pro-life. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, we can talk the talk, but if we don't walk the walk, yeah. then that's it. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. Exactly. So that's why Miravia is something that I will always support always. I bring different friends. We bring different friends with us every year because we like to introduce the banquet to people that have never been, you know. (laughs) It's fun, yeah. (laughs) It is. It's so much fun. And throughout the years, we probably have um, brought, you know, 20 different friends that had never heard of Miravia. Wow. You know, and and because I was one of them, right? So we had just moved here. So now I I usually look for people in my community that haven't been here a long time. And I'm like, oh, have you heard about Miravia? There's banquets coming up, and you should come with us. And I don't even tell them a lot of stuff. I want them to get there and be blown away because it's always like that. They're always blown away. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us to come. This is wonderful what they're doing. You know, everybody's blown away. They can't believe it. So thank you, Debbie. Thank you for you and your team. You guys are doing an amazing job. We do have to take another quick break, our last break, and we're going to come right back, okay? Thank you. The Carolina Catholic Video On Demand section is now available with over 40 video segments from our 12-hour virtual conference held on September 12th. You'll find it under the On Demand tab at carolinacatholicradio.org. Carolina Catholic Parish News. St. Therese Catholic Church in Mooresville is seeking a Director of Music Ministry. This is a part-time position with 25 to 29 hours per week reporting to the parish manager. The ideal candidate will be able to maintain a flexible work schedule, including flexible days, hours, and possible evenings in the position of leading the music ministry of the parish. 
Responsibilities include presiding over weekend liturgies, training cantors, overseeing the contemporary praise band, organizing choirs for adults or children, as well as leading the handbell choir. For specific qualifications, responsibilities, and instructions to apply, go to stthérèse.net forward slash st therese is dash hiring. For the Carolina Catholic News, I'm Pam Cullen. God bless y'all. Experience the incredible story of the woman who Time Magazine named the most influential Catholic woman in the United States. Born Rita Rizzo, the future mother Angelica grew up in a rough neighborhood in Canton, Ohio. Young Rita experienced abandonment, rejection, and heartache, but God touched her through a woman named Rhoda Wise. Encounter this amazing woman at the Mother Angelica Museum. Plan your visit today at MotherAngelicaMuseum.com. Carolina Catholic Radio is available to you seven ways. On your radio, computer, smartphone, and Alexa. You can also engage with us on Facebook, eBlast, and YouTube. Catch the spirit. Prayerfully consider a tax-deductible donation today at CarolinaCatholicRadio.org. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, and today I have with me Debbie Capen, who is the executive director for Miravia. And um, if you've been listening to us, you've already learned the amazing things that Miravia are doing for all the young women who are looking to have their babies, they find themselves pregnant, college students, I can't even imagine how difficult it must be for them, you know, um, but they want to keep their, their baby, so they come to Miravia, and Miravia provides everything that they need, and, and that's, that's amazing, I love it. Explain to us um, how the process goes, like if a, if a young woman is not going to college, and does she have to be going to um, Belmont Abbey to be able to come into your program? How does that all work? Oh, thank you for asking, because that comes up a lot. So let me start with no. They um, they do not have to be either Belmont Abbey students or choose to go to Belmont Abbey to live with us. Okay. Um, they can, like I said, we've had moms from eight different uh, colleges so far. I'm sorry, 10 different colleges. So um, how it works is if a young woman finds out she's pregnant um, and she calls us, we you know have a nice conversation over the phone and kind of gauge their interest. And you know, let's say for instance they're they're not interested in coming in after we talk about the program, we make sure that before we hang up that they've got every resource, you know, contact information that they need That's and that wonderful. we are still here for them mm-hmm. if, you know, down the road if they change their mind or invite them to our outreach center in Charlotte for help. Okay. Um, but our moms have done everything from let's see if we have firefighter school, beauty school, community college, four years degree four year degree, master's degree what we want to do is make sure that they are continuing their higher education mm. on a path that will allow them to have a bright future. So, you know, whatever that looks like, and usually they are already on that trajectory when they find out about us. Okay. So we want to make sure that they can finish that plan. Um, and it's really, I like to say, it's not rocket science. It's just giving that support, that, that really tangible mm-hmm. and practical support they need so that it's not a crisis. It's only a crisis because they're unsupported. That's um, so true. But if they're supported, the crisis melts away, and they're able to envision fu- the future. Mm-hmm. And you know, some of our moms do choose um, to place for adoption. Most, you know, choose parenting. But we're here to help them on that path and provide the resources, the information, the love, the support, the guidance. Um, so that they can achieve their hopes and dreams with, you know, that sweet life that, that has been created within them. 
Um, so that's you, know, and they can stay with us until their child is two years old. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and if they choose adoption, then we just make a plan that works for them. Is it staying, you know, after the baby's born through that semester? Is it, you know, really, really supporting them? What what makes sense for their situation? That's wonderful. So it's basically on an individual basis that mm-hmm. you're gonna. Yeah, I love that, and I love that they can stay until their babies are two years old. That's that's a wonderful thing, you know. It really is. I mean, by that time, she's she's a woman now. She's more mature. She understands now. She has a, a child to care for. So by that time, she knows it's her responsibility. And yes, you probably still guide her and help her um, stand on her two feet, but it is a good thing that they go, right? I mean, you can't keep them forever. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because as much as we would love for them to stay, you know, um, we have learned that, you know, it is. It's about this path of independence Yes. for themselves and their child. And and one unexpected thing that I hadn't considered was the attachment, too. Like, we get staff and volunteers. That's right. I can imagine. Yeah. It's like a family. And, you know, we have over and over again when the moms bring the babies back, you know, three years old, and they'll they'll come in. We had one, and it brought me to tears. You know, Aww. he walked in, and he said, we're home. Oh. <laughs> and... And so really for the child's sake, it's mm-hmm. good too for them, you know, so that when they do leave, it's not as traumatic, you yes. know, that they that they are striking out with their mom and don't feel that loss necessarily of, hey, where's the rest of my I family? agree. I agree. I think two years old is a good age for that. They won't remember yeah. much. You know, they were loved yeah. and everything, yeah. but then they started yeah. fresh with their mom, which is exactly, yeah. I think, how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, yeah. I think that's beautiful. I think that... um the layout you guys have and what you have going on with the program, obviously you've been doing this for years, and, and, and you probably twink thing, you know, here and there you change little things, but mm-hmm. if it's working, it's going to continue to work, right? So you right. just don't need to change that. But I want to talk more now about the banquet, and I know it's coming up. I just signed up the other day for a table. All right. Um, <laughs> it's a t- Thursday. It's always on a Thursday, seems like, right? Yes, it is always it is. on a Thursday always in on October. A Thursday, trying to hit that sweet spot before everybody gets busy in their weekend. Yep. But yet, Which you know, is very not smart. At the beginning of the work week. <laughs> yeah, it's very smart. So this year it's on October 14. It's at the Charlotte Convention Center. It always has been there, at least since I've been here, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to know, because I, I think I've heard that this is your biggest fundraiser. Right, correct? That it, is correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I like to talk about it and, and have people that never heard about this get excited and go sign up or go get a table and get five of uh, four or five of their friends. Couple, we always go with the other couples. I think mm-hmm. it's a great night. It's beautiful. Has always been great. I mean, I do think about taking my girls with us now, you know, since they're getting a little bit older. Um, so let's talk about where do they go to sign up? How do they find out about the banquet? Sure. Yeah, so to, to sign up to find out more, um, our website is miravia.org. So it's M-I-R-A-V-I-A dot O-R-G. Um, if you go to our website and click events, you'll see our banquet right there, um, and it will have all the details, including a link to register. Um, and we do encourage people to come with friends. It is, like you said, it's a fun night. It starts with a reception um, outside the banquet room as people are registering, and then they come in and they have a meal together and hear about everything that's gone on at the program that year. We always try to bring in a national um, pro-life speaker that's going to inform and and energize the, the the crowd because you know we are coming as supporting Miravia but everybody then is being sent out into this this world into this community to be apostles and to be to bring that pro-life message um, so we see that as a service to help to you know help our our friends to to learn about what's going on and get excited um, and it is. It's a, it's a really fun night, and I hope people will come. 
I do want to let people know that for our friends that just aren't quite ready to go out into a big crowd, we are putting together an online event. Great. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. We'll post that on the website as soon as we have all the details. Okay. Um, because we don't want anybody to miss out. We had a virtual event last year, had great feedback on it, and so now we just want to make sure that what, wherever people feel comfortable that, that we can make it a special night. That's wonderful. I'm glad you're going to have that option, too. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Yes, I think your banquet is well put together. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to hang out and see people from the, the diocese that you don't see all the time. I always love that first 45 minutes when we're all just mingling, too, because you get to see you get to see people you know from different churches, and, and you don't see them that often. So it's a nice way to catch up with people and, and with friends, you know, that you don't get to see enough. And then when you come into the room, and it's just always so beautiful, and it's always a wonderful meal, and the speaker, and you talk to it, which I love the way you you come. And I, and I have to say, I love the testimonies. I love mm -hmm. when you have one of the women speak. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. one of the young moms talking for five minutes or whatever it is, it just makes it so real. You know, yeah. and and it's always such an honor that they that they want to do this. You know, I'm very sensitive to the fact that our moms are very vulnerable. It's a vulnerable time, and so the the moms that have spoken in person, I have never solicited it. It has always been them saying, "Can I speak at the banquet? Oh, I want to thank everybody beautiful. and to tell them, you know, how great it's been." Yeah. And then when we make our annual video for the banquet, we Put it out there to our moms to say, hey, if anybody would like to share their story, you know, and you know, we we were actually running into the problem now that we can't, you know, it, we can't fit everybody in. Or wow, else the video that's a good problem long, to have, so. though, Debbie. <laughs> but it is the most touching part to hear yes, their stories and their journeys is. and to, to, to understand that we really are walking alongside of them in this, mm -hmm. this part of their lives. I think makes it, um, you know, when I hear those testimonies from the girls, from the young women, it, it, it really helps me to put myself in their shoes mm -hmm. and be like, what if that was me? Or what if that was one of my daughters? Yeah. You know, I would want to help them. I would want other people to help them. You know, so it's our job. It's our job as Christians, as Catholics. It's our job as faithful pro-life people to continue to work, to continue to do, to help you, assist you in all of your efforts, because together we can make a difference, yeah. you know, and, and and I'm sure, you know, this being your major fundraiser, you need a, a, a good amount of people to show up, right? Yeah, I know, yes, we do, we do, but, you know, we, we always shoot for around a thousand, um, Right now, we are at around 500, which at this at this stage is actually ahead of our normal uh, reservations. So we are hoping and praying for a night with old and new friends to come and everybody just come together as the kingdom of God and, and keep this mission going. Amen. I will be there with <laughs> friends and I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful night like always is. Wow, I can't believe our time together is already <laughs> done. <laughs> it, it goes by fast, doesn't it? It does. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to talk about Miravia. I love the work you're doing. I will support it and talk about it as many times as I can to as many people as I can. You are such a pleasure to be with. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, thank you, Elsa. Thank you for all that you do. I am so blown away by all that you've done and with the love and the joy that you do it. Oh, thank you. God is good. He, he He's the one who does it through me. So thank you. But I, I like to always end the show with a few re uh, reflection, reflection questions and a scripture verse to help my listeners go deeper into today today's episode. And the first question for today, what are some of the ways that God might be calling you to support the many existing pro-life organizations such as Miravia? Something to think about. Are you helping any organization such as Miravia? And if you're not, why not? Start thinking about that.
And do you see all children as a gift from the Lord? Because until that day that each one of us see all children, not only our children, every single children as children of the Lord, then abortion will be uh, disappear. It won't exist anymore. And, and the scripture verse for today is from Isaiah 43, 4, that says, You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. When I, when I read this scripture verse, I think of God the Father saying these words to all the young women who find themselves unexpectedly pregnant and in need of support. So thank you all for listening to this show, and thank you for all that you do for the pro-life movement. And please, if you can, go to the beautiful banquet in October and join us, and let's help Miravia achieve their goals. Thank you. Until next time, I'll see you next week, and God bless. Bye-bye. 